In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Joey 64 to play your physical Nintendo 64 games with save files in RetroArch. It was very recently that I learned about the Joey N64 cartridge flasher from Ben Venn, and after discovering it, it is this single line that really drew my interest to it. It can load directly from the carts into the Project 64 emulator. Now, I for one am not a big fan of Project 64, but this meant that the cartridge reader would have basic file drop support, which is very intriguing. And sure enough, that's exactly how it works. You plug your cart in and it pulls it up like a flash drive with access to the game ROM and save file. And so my journey began to make it so I could seamlessly load up physical N64 cartridges into better emulators than Project 64. And sure enough, it works in practically any N64 emulator you could want. So RetroArch, Moopin64, Project 64, Simple64, it all just works. But the ultimate hurdle to my plans was getting the save file to actually work seamlessly with these emulators because none of them actually use the cartridge name for the save file name anymore except for RetroArch. And RetroArch has its own hurdles to overcome when it comes to N64 save files because it repacks them into its own SRM format. But thankfully, converters exist, and thus my journey to create a script to automatically load N64 saves and carts within RetroArch was born. And I'm here today to show you my results and how to get it set up for yourself if you have a Joey64 and wish to try it. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now the first step to getting the Joey64 cartridge reader up and running within RetroArch to play your games and save files is to install RetroArch for Windows. This batch file that I've created is Windows specific. I might port it to Linux at some point when I better understand how to do Linux stuff, but as of now it is Windows only, so get RetroArch downloaded onto Windows. If you need help getting RetroArch installed, I do have a couple of guides on how to do so on my channel. And once it's installed, you just need to get Moopin64 Plus Next downloaded onto it through the online updater. So again, have a tutorial for N64 emulation within RetroArch as well. So get your N64 emulator installed and set up as desired. Really recommend using the parallel RDP and RSP for optimal accuracy and authenticity to the real N64 experience. And then you could also set up controller mappings as desired. With RetroArch installed, we just need to add our RetroArch folder into our Windows Path folder. So holding the Windows key on your keyboard and pressing the R button will bring up a run command. And you're going to want to type in run dll32.exe sysdm.cpl, edit environment variables. I'll have this. This command is going to be listed in the description below, as well as the readme file included with my Joey64 auto loader. So you can just copy and paste this, but once it's in your run command, just hit okay. And that will bring up your environment variables window here. Now under user variables for your username, you'll see one here that says path. So just double click on this. And we need to add our RetroArch folder to the path. Let me delete that one real quick. But to get it added, just click on new. And now we're going to paste in our RetroArch directory. So the easiest way to do this is just to go to your RetroArch exe or any file in here, really. Right click on it, click on properties, and under the location field, just copy the entire thing with a control C. Go back into your environment variables. Might have to click on, or yeah, there we go. And then just paste it in with control V so it leads directly to your RetroArch folder. And then press OK and press OK. And that is now ready to go. Now you are going to need a Joey N64 cart flasher from Ben Venn, so they are available through Ben Venn directly. If you are in the US, you can also get them from High Score Tech Supply. This is where I got mine. And for our European friends, you can also get them through Zed Labs, and Zen Labs does ship worldwide as well. And after you receive your Joey 64, make sure to update its firmware to the latest version. Mine was on version 17 here, so they got up to version 29. So super easy to get these updated. Just download the update file, get it extracted. Plug your Joey 64 into your PC without a game attached. Get it opened up if it doesn't automatically pop up like on mine. But you just copy the mode.txt file over and tell it to replace the file in the destination. 
And once it loads back up, copy over the firmware file and tell it to replace the file in the destination. And there you go, your Joey64 is now updated. From here, open up the mode.txt file because we want to make sure that it is set to Z64. It should be set to that automatically, but if not, you will want to change this first line to Z64. As you can see, the Joey64 knows a bunch of different uh, operating modes here, but the one we're going to be using is Z64. So once that's set to Z64, just go ahead and save it. If you had to change the mode, it will close and reopen the Joey64 window. And then we could delete the firmware update. We don't need it anymore. Now from here, we're going to head to my Joey64 Autoloader GitHub page under releases. And we're going to download the Joey64 Autoloader version 1.0 zip file. Once you have this file downloaded, just go ahead and get it extracted. So you can just extract it here. And the folder you want to have it show up in is joey underscore 64 underscore auto underscore loader. And inside you'll see a temp saves folder, a load n64.bat file, the readme file, and a save convert executable. So go ahead and place this joey64 auto loader folder anywhere on your PC that you wish to store it. So for me, I'm just going to put it under my D drive in my emulation folder just like so. But once you have the folder placed where you want it, just go ahead and open it up. Now right click on the load underscore n64.bat file and click on edit. If you are on Windows 11 and don't have classic context menus, you will need to click on the show more options button for the edit button to appear. But this will load the bat file in a text editor and we just need to convert it to match our directories for RetroArch, the Joey64 and our Joey64 autoloader folder. So the things you need to edit within this bat file are listed within quotation marks. So the first one is drive letter to your Joey64. And this one is very simple. Just open up your file explorer and look at the drive letter that was assigned to your Joey64. So for me, it is F. So I'm going to go in here and replace every instance of this quotation mark drive letter to your Joey64 with simply the letter F. The rest of the naming convention is already in place. So now I'm just going to go through and do that for every instance of it looking for my Joey64. So here we go. Drive letter to Joey64. F. Drive letter to Joey64. F. And drive letter to Joey64. F. And I believe that is all of them. We will find out as we go through. All right. So the next thing we have to change is the path to our Joey64 auto loading folder. Now the easiest way to get this directory is to go back into your Joey64 auto loading folder. Just head up one directory, right click on it, properties, and copy the location. And now begin pasting that into all the fields asking for it. Path to your Joey64 auto loader folder. Path to your Joey auto loader folder. Path to your Joey autoloader 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 folder. I'm not a programmer if you can't tell, so this might be a little more convoluted than it needed to be, but it works. Path to your Joey autoloader folder. And path to your Joey autoloader folder. And now the last thing we need is the path to our RetroArch folder. So again, the easiest way to get to this one is just to go to where you have your RetroArch folder installed. Go inside the RetroArch folder and then just right click on your RetroArch.exe, Properties, copy that location, and paste it into your bat file. And the rest of the subdirectory is already set for you. So again, just replace everything within quotations with what you copied from the properties window. Path to your RetroArch directory. There we go. And with that, we are now all set. So from here, just go ahead and save your bat file. Close out of it, close out of everything actually. Now you can unplug your Joey64. Plug in any N64 game that you wish to load up within RetroArch into the Joey64. And now plug the Joy64 back in and you'll see the game pop up automatically. Good. 
So now we're just going to run our bat files. So I saved that in D emulation, Joey 64 autoloader. I'm actually gonna make a shortcut to my desktop real quick because you can do that. So create shortcut, move that to my desktop so we can keep this window closed. But we're just gonna load it. So it has found the Legend of Zelda save file, copied it into my temp saves directory. It has converted that save file into RetroArch's format, copied it to my RetroArch folder, and now it is opening the ROM file to work within RetroArch. So unfortunately, the Joy64 has pretty slow transfer speeds, so it will take a minute depending on the size of the game. And there we go, it has now loaded up Ocarina of Time from my physical cartridge. And here is my save file from that cartridge. So just to give an example of it copying the save back onto your cartridge, let's go ahead and do something here that will reflect in a save file. So we are at 99 rupees right now. Let's go ahead and get this updated a little bit. And there we go, you can see that it has logged into my Retro Achievements account even. All right, so there we go. We now have 103 rupees. Let's go ahead and throw some bombs. Shoot some slingshots, just so we can change everything here. So you can see that it is taking effect as intended. So now we're gonna go ahead and save. And we're gonna go ahead and close out of the game now. So once the game is closed, the save file is now converted back into cartridge format and placed on the physical N64 cart. So now I'm just gonna unhook the Joey 64, take the game out, plug it into an actual N64, and you will see here that the save file has taken effect on the physical cart. All right, so here we go. There is my save file. And you can see now we have 103 rupees, three bombs and 24 bullets for our slingshot. That has all been adjusted according to what we just did in the save file on the Joey 64. And just to show you that it does update dynamically, let's throw some more bombs on the physical N64 side. So we're gonna have no bombs now, 18 seeds. And for good measure, we'll update the ruby count by a couple here. And there we go. Now we're gonna go ahead and save the game. And gonna turn the N64 off. Gonna plug Ocarina of Time back into my Joey 64. Plug the Joey 64 in. There we go. It's popped up. And we're just gonna run that bat file once again. And there we go, it is now loaded up my Ocarina of Time cartridge once again. And there we go, you can see I have no bombs, my seed count is lower, and I have 105 rupees now, so it has updated that emulation save to reflect what we did on the physical N64. So, very cool stuff. I'm really happy with how seamless this has turned out to be, and it works with every onboard N64 save type. So, EEPROM, Flash RAM, SRAM, doesn't matter. But this project wouldn't have been possible without the Joey 64 from Ben Vin and the RetroArch SRAM converter from Dreren. So just a big shout out to both. Thank you for making my N64 dreams of playing my physical carts and emulation to earn retro achievements possible.
But this is where we're going to call it. Thank you so much as always for watching today's video. I hope it helps you get N64 emulation running even more to your desires if you happen to have a large physical collection that you want to play from. But here at the end, I have the usual favors to ask. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that thumbs up, thumbs down button, depending on how much you like this video, as well as that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new content goes live on the channel. Loads always coming your way, and I look forward to sharing it all with you when it arrives. But if you'd like to see this project continue to grow or support the channel just because, you could also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little really goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and bringing all of this content directly to you. Big shout out to all of our current backers. Thank you so much for believing in what we do here and helping us keep it going. You are the truest of champs and we could not do it without you. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.